you find me on Penzance's Pebbly Beach, just five miles away from Land's End. And it's the start line to our next big event. Yes, Mark Beaumont and myself are taking on a relay race from Land's End to John O'Groats in under 45 hours. So I thought I'd take the time to run you through some of the kit I'll be using and some of the bikes I'll be using too. So first thing I think we should talk about is the kit I will be wearing. Now, as we know, our bodies are the biggest object that we're gonna be fighting against the air density with. So we wanna try and make our bodies as aerodynamic as humanly possible. Now we can do that by being aerodynamic on the bike in, a posi in an aerodynamic position, and we can do that through the clothing we wear. So the, the suit that I've gone for is Castelli's Rossa Corsa Speed Suit. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I've gone for the speed suit and not the full skin suit. Number one being, it's gonna be quite hot. We're looking at around 22 degrees. Now that's hot from a British perspective. So I've gone for some short sleeves and also gone for this light material, this light aerodynamic material, so it don't overheat. The last thing you want to do, especially on a long journey like this one, is overheat. They've also got some aerodynamic dimples on the shorts, so that help, that really does help with the aerodynamic capabilities of this suit. Now, the other big reason I've gone for a speed suit is for the pockets on the back. Now, the pockets are really important. They're not only going to allow me to put the tracer in my back pocket so we can time and keep track of uh, where we are on the course, but it's also so I can feed and put the radio in those back pockets. So, um, so yeah, really important feature because ultimately we're going to need to be fueling throughout the whole of this 45 hour period. And uh, it becomes absolutely imperative that you can get your food out in a real quick instance as and when you need it. So these are imperative. Moving on from the suit, we're going on to the helmet. Now the helmet I've gone for is Giro's Aerohead Mips TT helmet, probably about as aerodynamic as it gets. And it's gonna be perfect for when I'm especially on that TT setup. Now, the interesting part of this helmet is the comms. Now, these are some Bluetooth radio comms in the middle there. Now, this enables me to communicate with the follow vehicle, change of direction, and also, really importantly, is going to, so I know when to get off and on the bike, um, uh, so I can work a little bit better with Mark on that aspect. But I've also been told that I can play my music, but more importantly, my inspirational quotes that I'm gonna be having on an hour loop basis. I can do this, I can get through it. So yeah, really important piece of equipment there. Moving on to nutrition. Now, as we know, nutrition fueling is the only thing that keeps the car going. So you've got to be well fueled throughout the challenge. Now, New Zest have sorted me out with their lean, mean protein. Now this is all pea based, so it's really good on the stomach, but I'm also got their, uh, their green mixture, so their good green vitality there. So hopefully we're gonna mix that in with the protein in the morning to give you that bit of an energy boost or a bit of a spike to keep us going. After all, we're gonna be going for around 45 hours and uh, recovery and getting the right proteins in is absolutely imperative. So Nuzest have sorted me out with my favorite uh, flavor there, rich chocolate. As we know though, I've had, uh, well, I'm really cautious about my bottom. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, it's happened with a penny farthing. So this time I really want to look after my bottom. So I've got in touch with Shami Butter and Shami Butter have really sorted me out with a whole host of, uh, of uh, chamois cream. Now this becomes important. Now I'm telling you it becomes important because I know from experience. Now when you're sitting on a bike for 45 hours, even especially on a TT setup, you need some of this. Now this prevents the chafing, but it also prevents um, any inflammation or uh, it, keeps, it keeps it well cooled basically, your undercarriage. So something you wanna look after is those uh, contact points. So it's your forearms, it's your shoes, make sure they're really good and tightened and you're used to riding them, but also your bottom on your saddle and that's where chamois butter come in nice and handy. So that is all the kit I'm gonna be using, but you wanna see what bikes I'm gonna be riding. So now I reckon it's time we have a deep look at those bikes over there. 
So the first bike I'm going to talk you through is this, my Argon 18 E118 Disc TT bike. Now this is the bike I'm going to be used for majority of the time where speed is what counts here. Now, I've spent a little bit of time riding this bike, but I've also had some help from Magnus Backstead to hopefully get me in a nice aerodynamic, but also powerful position. And I've got to remember, it's got to be comfortable too. After all, I'm going to be riding about 400 miles all in on this baby. Now this is a fully carbon frame and forks, but the carbon fiber layup that he's used is what Argon 18 called the pro level layup. Meaning basically it's light and it's strong. As you can see, it's got a very much bladed construction and that is so it can slide or cut through the air that bit quicker. So starting with the saddle and I for one need something that's super comfortable. After all, this isn't just one hour. This is hour on, hour off, hour on, hour off for around, well, 25 hours. So it needs to be super comfortable, especially when I'm sitting in an aerodynamic position. Now this is Seller Italia's TT saddle. Now this is the Watt Superflow. Now it's got some added comfort with some gel in there and it's also got a slight cut off nose so I can get on top of that saddle and in that aerodynamic position. So moving forward to the front cockpit. Now this is the aerodynamic cockpit. This is uh, where, where you've got the extensions here so I can get nice and forward on top of the bike. Starting off, we've got some Shimano Di2 shifters over the top. Now these two buttons are gonna be used to change the back cassette. So that's basically where I'll spend most of the time changing up and down gears. Uh, moving down from there, you can see I've actually got some uh, uh, 3D printed custom extensions here that I've borrowed off Dr. Oliver Bridgewood. He used them in the hour record. So I'm hopefully, well, hopefully I'm gonna be do as good a job as he did, but I haven't st stuck with the uh, 3D printed um, grippers up top because I tend to find when it gets sweaty, I kind of slip. So I've done some, uh, some bodging and I've added some tape up there too. So moving down from the grippers, as you know, if you're doing such a long journey like this, it's not going to be able to memorize the route. So I have downloaded from Komoot the route onto my Wahoo Roam. Now this is going to give me the, the corners, where to, where to go, when the corner's coming up, but it's also going to enable me to see my average speed and my power which is really important because I'll be able to know how much power I need to put out and if I'm lacking in some areas. So hopefully I can maintain good power throughout the challenge. Moving down from my Wahoo Roam, now we're going to the armrests here. Now I've got some custom carbon armrests that they haven't been molded specifically for me, but I find they work quite well. And the, the time I've spent with Magnus Backstead doing the bike fit, we've, we've been able to get quite a nice aerodynamic position, but also staying relatively comfortable. Well, as comfortable as you can get on a time trial bike. So from the, from the pads, I've got a solid amount of foam on there. I might even add a bit more foam because it gets quite comfortable, especially on the harder road surfaces. So I've got some spare uh, foam that I can add to it just to give me a little bit more comfort. But moving down from the carbon custom armrest, we go down to the base bar. Now this is where I'm. In, I'm you can use the uh, the group set to change from big ring to small ring, but it's also got the TRP brakes there. And I've got 160 discs front and rear. But if we move on to the wheels and the tires, which is another really important point when looking for speed. Now I've gone for Vision's Metron 55 SLs, fully carbon, and they're also a good aerodynamic wheel, but uh, as well as that, they're easy to handle, especially when you're over the top on the, uh, the arm extensions of the TT bike. It's if you have too deep rim on the front, it gets quite hard to handle, especially in those windy conditions. So I've gone for a 55, and I've gone for a 55 on the rear. I was going to go for something that's slightly deeper, maybe even a disc, but I thought for all the conditions that could be thrown at me over the, like, the next 45 hours to go for similar 55 visions on both front and back, which I think work quite nicely. So moving from the carbon rims, we go to the tires. Now I've gone for some fast tire setup as well. I've gone for the Clincher P0 Velos. Now I've got some standard inner tubes in at the moment and I was actually looking to put in some latex ones, but when I was talking to the mechanic, he mentioned that they're easy to puncture. 
and we're weighing up the the uh, the difference of getting a puncture or riding normal, more durable inner tubes. And we reckoned that I'd probably save a little bit more time if I just kept a standard setup than going for latex. Because if I incurred a puncture, well, I'm going to hemorrhage time. And time is of the essence, especially on this challenge. So as yeah, as we know, gears are incredibly important because they not only are going to allow me to hit 55k now on the flats in the downhills, but also enabling me to climb in a nice small gear when I hit the big climbs. But this isn't the only bike I've got for this challenge. I've also got an endurance setup. So I reckon it's time we go and check out the endurance setup I've got for this challenge. And this is that bike. Now this is Argon 18's Krypton Pro, designed to eat up the kilometers. Now hopefully, this isn't gonna be my kryptonite for this challenge. Your bad joke. All right, let's get onto the details, shall we? Yes. So this bike, like the TT bike, is also constructed from carbon fiber. Now the layout that Argon 18 have used also reduces the road buzz. Now this creates a bit more comfort, especially when you're doing long hours in the saddle. Now, as we know, the carbon fiber forks and the frame keeps it stiff and also light and agile, meaning it's the perfect bike for a big endurance challenge like this one. Now moving on to the paint job, and as you can see, well, I think you can agree, it looks fast standing still. We've got a nice reflective logo on that Argon 18 piece there. And I have to say, that really makes it pop. So now if we move back towards the saddle, now I'm using the same saddle as I did on the TT bike, a Seller Italia's Watt Superflow. So hopefully, if you're keeping the same saddle, you're not gonna get too many issues with the undercarriage. Going forwards to the front of the cockpit, now I've got some generic uh, bar extensions that have uh, basically bolted on to the circular bars there that you would find on a normal road bike. Now this just allows me to get a little bit more comfort and take out the pressure in your hands. Because when you're doing such long distances on the bike, you can damage your nerves on the inside of your hands. So when you've got the arm extensions there, it puts the pressure onto your forearms, but also allowing you to stay in a more aerodynamic position. So naturally you don't have to put so many watts out for the speed you wanna be going. Now we're trying to average around 19 miles an hour. So around 90 to 20 miles an hour. So speed is of the highest priority. The group set that we've got on this bike is Shimano's latest DI2 group set. We're shifting for both big rings and the back cassette up top on the extensions there. Now moving back from the extensions and the shifting, we've also got my Wahoo head unit. We've also got a Bluetooth remote for our lights. Now we've been really lucky in partnering up with Lupine Lights that have supplied us with these lights. Now these are probably the lightest or brightest lights you're gonna be able to get your hands on. Now this is the SL8X. Now the lupins that this can give off on the brightest setting is 2,200 lumens. Yeah, a fair bit. And with the battery mounted on the frame here, it gives it an hour and 45 minutes at full beam, which is perfect for our relay because we're only looking to go around an hour to an hour and a half at any one time. So moving on to the rear, Lupine have supplied us with the Rotlick rear light. Now this one supplies 160 lumens of brightness, but it lasts for around 30 hours, which is gonna be plenty for our records. We might just need to change one light or even just charge this one once or twice. But a really interesting feature on this one is when you break the bike, the light can understand when you're braking, when you're slowing down, and actually brighten up the rear light to let everyone know behind that you're slowing down and to take it that little bit easier, which is a nice feature and something I've never used before. So I'm really interested to see how that one works. So bolting on to the frame and forks, I've gone for the same wheels as my TT setup, the Vision Metron 55. SLs with, again, the P0 clincher tires. But the uh, gear ratio that I've gone for is very different to uh, the TT setup. I've gone for a 52.36 on the front and 11.30 on the back, meaning I've got a bigger range because I'm gonna be using this bike when I hit the mountains or the big climbs. But ultimately, that is my endurance setup with some power pedals. And I've also got it in the small ring because 
I wanted to show you this is my climbing bike. Lighter, more agile, more endurance friendly. So there you have it, my kit and my bike setup for, for what is going to be one of the hardest challenges that I'm gonna take on with Mark Beaumont. I'm hoping I get through it, but I just wanna say a massive thank you to New Zest, Shami Butter, Lupine Light, and Argon 18 for helping me out on what's gonna be a savage challenge.